you've been following our video series, you've already seen all of the components that you'll need to make your wooden wick candle. Now we're gonna be going through each of them and putting them together to make a finished product. Okay, so we have our matte black aura here. This is the vessel we're gonna be using today. It has a 13 ounce fill. We've got our wooden wicks, wick clips, wick stickers, fragrance oil, wax scale, wax cutter, hot plate, and everything we need to get started. So Jeff and I are going to get these vessels wicked up. So we're gonna start by just taking our wick stickers. I'll take the wick stickers. Jeff, you can take the wicks and the wick clips and I'll handle the wick stickers. <laughs> I think I got the easy job. Give him the manual labor. So after you peel away the adhesive from your wick sticker, um, the Aura vessels are really easy to use since they have a smaller circle in the center of the vessel, um, which gives you a place marker for placing them into the center. You're gonna wanna make sure that your wick is perfectly placed into the center. You can gently press it down and you will be good to go from there. Wooden wicks are rigid, which means you don't need any straightening tools to keep them upright in your container, which is a great way for beginners to start out since you can simply just place the wick into the center of the vessel. Okay, so again, really easy process. Just place your wick into the wick clip, put your wick sticker on the bottom, and then center it into the bottom of your container. Perfect. Okay, Jeff, can you grab our pouring pitcher? Um, so fragrance and wax, we both measure by weight. That's why Jeff is using a scale right now. Um, so these vessels are 13 ounces each. As I mentioned, we're gonna make two of them today. So Jeff and I are gonna need 26 ounces total volume. Jeff, you man the scale. I'll cut the wax. We're gonna be using our virgin coconut soy wax today, which is a really easy to use wax. Um, great performance. You can see it cuts like butter. Jeff, you make a lot of candles. What are some tips for just kind of having an efficient process when you're making candles? Anything you've found along the way that helps with consistency, with timing? Definitely trying to plan out exactly what you're doing, know how many candles you're gonna do, and going through and setting up everything, doing uh, the, the wicks and the wick stickers all at once, setting as many of those aside as possible, going through and making sure that you have everything poured and ready uh, so that you can switch between the steps as easy as possible. You guys have been following along our video series and you've picked out your components at this point, um, doing everything all at once, like wicking or um, melting your wax, obviously. Yeah. Things that are just easier when they're done all together. I know one nice thing also, when you start to kind of ramp up your production and you're doing more candles, uh, 40, 50, 60 at a time, it's kind of nice to have two different hot plates, two different melting pitchers. That way you can melt one and pour one at the same time and kind of bounce back and forth. That's great advice. Today we're just making two, so we've got it easy. But as you guys scale up, you definitely want to keep those things in mind. And those are things that you'll pick up over time. You'll know exactly what you need to do once you start making more candles and kind of ramp that up. And you know you're going to need more vessels at one time, a second pitcher at one time. Practice will make perfect. Absolutely. So this is definitely a work in progress, even for me and Jeff. We're always learning something new. We've got our wax measured out now on the scale. So I'm going to take my wax and I'm going to put it into our double boiler over here. We're going to let that sit. Now Jeff and I have some time to relax. So yeah. <laughs> we'll catch you guys back once the wax is melted. We're back. Now that the wax has melted to the manufacturer's suggested mix and pour temperature, we're ready to add our fragrance oil. So Charlotte is grabbing our wax, which we've already weighed. Uh, it's 26 ounces, which we're gonna go into the vessels perfectly. And we're gonna be using two ounces of oil and we're using wild vetiver and suede from the Wooden Wick Co. Uh, this is gonna give us about an 8% fragrance load on this. When you add your fragrance oil, you want to mix the fragrance for two to three minutes so that the fragrance can fully bind with your wax. Um, be sure that you're always adding your fragrance, as we said, at the manufacturer's suggested mix and pour temperature. That way you have optimal performance with your wax. You don't run into any performance or aesthetic issues upon yeah. pouring your candle. Okay, 
now that we have fully mixed our fragrance oil, it's time for the fun part. Let's pour and see how it goes. Pour some candles. Here we go. Nice and steady. You want to pour your wax until about half an inch to one inch above the top of your vessel, just depending on the size of the vessel and your personal preference. This fragrance oil smells delightful. It does smell really nice. Beautiful. Okay. So once your wax has been poured into the vessels, you want to let your candles fully set for 24 hours before handling them, moving them, trimming your wicks, really doing anything to disrupt the surface of the wax so that you get a nice even look to your candles like these shown here. Absolutely, and you're gonna to wanna to do that just because once the candle looks like it's cooled to the top, uh, even several hours later, it's still cool throughout the middle, so you can definitely move that wick if you were to, if you were to bump it or touch it, so it's good to just let them sit. Absolutely. So patience, patience, patience. Absolutely. Good trait with candle making. Um, here we have two candles that Jeff and I previously made, and we're going to demonstrate now how you trim your wicks. So with wood wicks, you want to trim them to about 3 16 of an inch above the surface of your wax. So you can simply take wick trimmers. I like to hold on to the tip of my wick, cut straight across. Here you are. Thank you. Perfect. So now we have our finished candles, beautiful luxury wood wick candles that Jeff and I have made today. Um, so again, just to kind of walk you guys through the process, you need to weigh your wax, you need to melt it, add your fragrance oil. Um, we suggest using eight to 10%. All of that is done by weight. We have a fragrance percentage chart on woodenwick.com. If you guys are making more or less candles, not doing the same exact thing, that's okay. We can still help you with the fragrance percentage chart. So feel free to use that as a resource. Um, once that's melted, mix for two to three minutes, pour your candles and let them fully set before you trim. Did I miss anything? I think the only thing we missed is once it gets done, this is a single pour wax, which we mentioned before, but just in case there is like maybe a bump wick or something like that, maybe run the heat gun over it just to smooth out that top anymore if it needs it. Absolutely, the heat gun never hurts. Best friend, like I keep saying. Um, and then for the final step, we're gonna add some safety labels to our candles. We, we did, did it. it. <laughs> All right, now that you've made your very own luxury wooden wick candles, you can do whatever you like with them. Hand them out to friends, test burn them yourself, or start your very own candle business. For continuing education, follow Stanley Handcrafted and the Wooden Wick Co. on YouTube, and visit woodenwick.com for more makers' tips and tricks. Happy, Happy making. making.